Come in. I opened the door to Poppy's room and peered inside. Is now a good time? I asked, opening it wider when I saw he was alone. Ever since Poppy's longtime girlfriend had cheated on him, his room in the frat had been like a motel, with the vacancy sign constantly flickering. Yeah, bro, enter, our treasurer said, barely taking his eyes off of the soccer game he was watching on TV. I come bearing gifts, I said, showing him the two bottles of beer I had in my hands. I appreciate that, Poppy said when I handed him one. Take a seat. I perched myself on the edge of one of the two empty chairs and took a sip of my beer. What can I do for you, young temple? I was the youngest of three boys, Ridge, Wes, and myself. All three of us were currently attending U of M, and were all members of the Delta Fraternity. Ridge, being the oldest, had been here longest and was currently the president. I don't know, puppy. Probably nothing, I said honestly, playing with a label on my bottle. I've been feeling bored ever since we came back from winter break. I've been restless. It's your first year away from home. What did you do to keep yourself busy before? He asked. Whatever I wanted, I replied with a sharp laugh. Hang out with my buddies, travel, spend money on stupid shit. Can't you do that stuff here? I shrugged. It doesn't appeal to me anymore, you know? I mean, traveling does, but I can't exactly hop on the yacht and go sailing or take a quick trip to Italy. Classes and shit kind of get in the way. Anyway, I sounded like a rich asshole, but really, that's all I'd ever been. Don't get me wrong, I love spending time with my brothers, but they're both whipped. Not to say I don't like hanging out with Carrie and Trixie. They're already like sisters to me. But I'm kind of the fifth wheel now, which sucks. Poppy leaned forward and rested his elbows on his knees. So, you need something more. Something other than the frat, school, and your family to keep you busy? Basically, yeah. Do you play any sports? I started to nod, then shook my head. Sailing, flying, and rowing. Nothing that's offered here. Hmm. What about women? He asked. Your brothers have both lucked out in that department. Maybe you need to spend your time wooing someone. The girls I've hung out with since being here have been more about a good time than anything serious, I said with a laugh. I haven't met any I'd like to woo. I'll leave that to my brothers. Even as I said it, an image of a gorgeous, dark-haired gypsy came to mind. Emma. What are you wearing? Where are you even going dressed like that? He looked down at his white shirt, which for some reason had dozens of tiny holes in it, and a dark gray cardigan. What? Did you buy that shirt with the holes in it? I asked, flicking my wrist at his chest. This shirt cost $300. He deadpanned. My jaw dropped. You seriously dropped 300 on a t-shirt with BB-sized holes in it? I could have put holes in it for a fraction of the cost and put the money to good use, rather than giving it to a ridiculously expensive boutique. I walked around him again, completely annoyed. How would you put it to good use? He asked, catching up with me again. I don't know. Buying pajamas and toiletries for the kids at the shelter, or paying our overdue phone bill. Do you need help with those things? Brody asked, his voice totally serious. I stopped again and glared at him. Do you want me to punch you in the face, or do you think you're being gallant? Brody held up his hands and said, Just want to help. I don't need your help, Temple. Never will. Careful. Brody said with that damn grin, his floppy hair moving in the wind and daring me to run my fingers through it. Don't make statements you can't stick to. Gosh, Brody, I don't have time for this. You're making me late, so please get back in your penis mobile and let me get to where I need to be. All right, I get it. You're busy. You have my number if you ever need me or just want to talk, he said his eyes doing that smoldering thing they did. Or if you want to grab dinner sometime. Don't hold your breath, I retorted, going around him once more and hurrying across the street. This time, Brody didn't follow, but he did shout out. I love you, Emma. I shook my head, and since he couldn't see, I allowed my lips to turn up and a small laugh to escape my lips. What an idiot. <laughs>